For my own students that are, you know, hard at work in the research laboratory, they can see something that is totally contrary to what they've observed before. That was amazing because it's very rare that you learn something as crazy as quantum mechanics and then learn that it could be used for new technologies. Education is an important foundation for helping advance a new field, especially in science and technology. Major universities will play a key role in developing the next generation of quantum programmers, scientists, engineers, and researchers. A great place to learn about how universities are advancing quantum knowledge is the University of Washington, one of our partners in the Northwest Quantum Nexus and home of the Quantum X Initiative. I'm Krista Savori, General Manager of Quantum Systems and Software at Microsoft. And today, I'm meeting with Professor Kai Mei Fu, an experimental physics researcher and professor focusing on advancing quantum technologies. Kai Mei, thank you for speaking with me today about quantum information science. Would you tell me a little bit about your role here at the University of Washington? I'm a professor in the physics department and the electrical and computer engineering department. I teach from first year physics all the way to graduate level courses in quantum information, but then I also run a laboratory developing hardware for quantum information science. This is science and technology where you utilize quantum mechanics to achieve a technological or scientific advantage. We generally split it up into four categories. One is quantum computing, algorithms that use entanglement, superposition for a computational advantage, communication. By the laws of quantum mechanics, you can't copy a state. And so that means you can have secure communication sensing. We can have very, very high precision sensors that exist in quantum mechanical states. And finally, it's simulation. We want to be able to simulate the world around us, but many of the interesting materials that we have have quantum mechanical interactions that we can't simulate on a classical computer. You know, for myself, I remember taking a, a cryptography seminar. I was a math major as an undergraduate, and when I took that seminar, you know, I learned that there was a model of computation, namely quantum computing, that could break, you know, most of our public key crypto systems today, right? The mainstay of e-commerce today, RSA. I was perplexed, fascinated, and inspired, you know, all at the same time. And I actually then switched into computer science because I wanted to be able to take that model of computation and make it programmable and, you know, enable uh, users to actually program a quantum computer to solve such problems. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see this emerge and the numbers of jobs getting posted is growing quite rapidly. LinkedIn said that in the past year and a half, the number of postings in this area has gone up 180% as compared to the prior three to four years. So significant Amazing. growth in this area right now. So you must see more and more students uh, expressing interest in quantum information science. When I first came here, you know, I would get a few students a year asking to work in my laboratory at the, at the undergraduate level. And, and now I get, you know, several students every week. And I, wow. I, my lab can't possibly have that many researchers. Talking with Professor Fu reinforces that there's a ton of opportunity and diversity of skills required in the field of quantum information sciences. I wanted to hear from some University of Washington students to understand their experiences and research and what inspired them to pursue a career in quantum. I did a double major with math and physics in my undergrad, uh, and then slowly realized that everything I liked about math was actually physics. My road into quantum information was a little uh, non-linear. So I was just exploring different fields, and I tried a little bit of uh, uh, synthetic biology. One day I was working on some homework in one of the upstairs study rooms, and a grad student came up and asked if anybody wanted to see something amazing. 
He just got in his experiments work looking at fluorescent molecules in live cells. You could actually watch these molecules moving around. It was just an incredible moment of, I was seeing something that maybe 50 people had ever seen before, and I joined their lab the next week. So your research here at the University of Washington, uh, what, what is it about? What are you focused on? My research is in discovering whether we can use quantum devices to aid in the calculations relevant for nuclear and particle physics. I am an ion trapper. So I trap single barium ions and then use them to study quantum mechanics. Working with nitrogen vacancy uh, defects in uh, diamond, we have these isolated uh, single atom like defects in this diamond and we use them as a qubits in a quantum computation system. The future uh, quantum computation holds a lot of promise. Quantum communication also, it's, uh, it's the start of something great, so I want to be part of it. So as a viewer at home, you know, what's your recommendation to really start learning about this exciting field of quantum information? Be curious. I mean, that's really what I want to say. Be curious. Learn what you can learn now. Learn how, you know, learn about light, how, how, how light diffracts through crystals. Do experiments. And of course, you know, have a solid foundation in mathematics. That's probably all you need for entering this field. I always think back to my own experience. I never took physics until my graduate school uh, days when I jumped straight into quantum mechanics without classical mechanics, so. And there are also opportunities to pick up and start learning quantum programming today, right, with Q-sharp and the Microsoft Quantum Development Kit. You know, you can try little exercises in, in quantum programming uh, and start to actually, you know, be introduced to some of the concepts of quantum mechanics uh, in a way that may be more familiar to one that, you know, codes daily, right? Yeah, and you can even have access to, like, quantum simulators right. and quantum computers through the cloud right now that are that are publicly accessible that people can, can play on, which is not something that just didn't exist five years ago. Well, thank you so much, Kaime, for speaking with me today about this really exciting field. Well, it was my pleasure to be here. The University of Washington is focusing on educating students to be able to jump into the quantum information sciences. And programs are popping up at universities around the world, full of students ready to push the field forward. It's through these curious and dedicated students that the next breakthroughs and innovations in quantum will come. And I, for one, can't wait to see what they accomplish.